Hi, hello, welcome back to another function. This is Krish Bhavna. I'm here for the first time. I'm a third year computer science student at University of Illinois at Chicago and I'm minoring in entrepreneurship. It's been really so long since I've done an actual coding video on my channel and I'm very happy to bring it back onto the channel. I'll be doing a coding mock interview challenge today and I've done it with two of my other friends, Vargesh and Madhav and I'm really excited to show it to you all. Apart from that, there's one small correction though. I've actually looked at my desktop rather than the actual webcam. It shouldn't be done during the interviews, but it was a mock interview just me with all our friends. I've actually looked at the desktop, but in case if you're wondering why I was looking the other way, that's the reason. But I really hope you all like this video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do share with all your friends. And Hello, let's Chris. get started. Uh, my name is Madhav and I'll be your interviewer today. And uh, yeah, my colleague is over here. Hi, Chris. Uh, this is Dwargesh. Uh, I'm Dwarges. from KMP Solutions. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. Uh, so, Krish, uh, we're going to take notes today. Uh, so, you'll be having your technical round today. Thank you, Madhav. So, Krish, um, I have made a, a document for you that uh, specifies a problem. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you a few regulations and rules um, before we get started in this interview. Okay. So, you'll be having 45 minutes to complete this interview. And um, I'll be taking notes on the side as well as my colleague Madhav um, about in general thoughts about uh, your progress, what you're doing, um, nothing to worry about. So uh, stay calm and uh, uh, as you go, just explain your process and you will do just fine. Awesome, thank you so much. Yep. Um, whenever you're free, um, please share your screen. Okay. So, let me explain you the problem, Krish, and um, uh, I will start the timer and I will start taking notes and you can ask any questions uh, whenever I finish the problem. So the problem states that you're given a non-empty array of integer nums where every element appears twice except for just one number. So mm -hmm. let's take, for example, the first input. We have two, two, and one. In mm -hmm. that case, um, you ignore the uh, two because it's repeated again, and okay. you only uh, print out the one because that's a single number that's within that specific array. Okay. So you can assume that in every single array that you get, there's at least one number or more than one number that is repeated, and there exists a, um, at most one number that won't have a repeated um, value um, in okay. that array. Okay. Um, so your task is to implement a solution with a linear runtime. Okay. Um, okay. I will start the timer and you can ask any questions. Now. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Vargesh. Uh, just to clarify, uh, I'll be given a vector and then I'm just trying to find out one number which doesn't have any duplicates. Am I right? Correct. Okay. Awesome. So I'll be, so for example, let's say um, I can assume there can be an array of different sizes, so one or however much the size can be. Okay, and then the, okay, so the linear approach, so I will be, so solving this in O of N, as that's what we are expecting it from here. So one of, the immediate ideas that I have right now is using a map. So okay. I want to use a map where we have um, the key is going to be the actual value in the vector, whereas um, the input um, or uh, the value is going to be the number of times it is in the um, the number of times it is in the vector. So that finally we have both keys and pairs, and finally we can iterate through it and we can find out. Um, which value has uh, only one and everything else is twice. Yep, that's exactly why um, that's a good approach to pursue, Krish. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so let me, I'll, by the way, I'll be writing in C++ as I mentioned you before. So it'll be int comma int and then let me call it data map because everything which is related to data is in here. So it'll be a map where T is going to be values in the vector, and then the value is going to be number of Okay. So now, um, 
one of the things that we need to do earlier is uh, starting with iteration. So we'll start with iterating through the vector where uh, we're going to iterate through every single element. So it's going to be num start size and then access plus. And then awesome. So the main ideology is like while iterating through every single element, we push it into the map. But right. just to do it a little differently, let's create uh, something called int. Um, so this is going to be number of duplicates. Uh, and then we're going to send it to zero. And so what we're going to do here is going to be so this is this method called dot count in the map, um, which uh, tells us if the key already exists. So I would like to use that specific function so that I know whether the key already exists or not, so that I'm not creating any other duplicates or mm -hmm. I'm manipulating any of the other data. So um, basically I'm going to start with if, um, it's going to be data map but count and then uh, I have to be with the values which so going to be nums dot i and if it is is greater than zero that's already existing in the um, current map so I'm going to implement the statement just in a while let me also write the else so uh, the direction that I'm heading towards. So just to make sure, Krish, um for the if condition that you just declared, um yes. so are you um comparing the nums, so the specific value of nums um inside the count or are you um, oh sorry uh, so sorry let me reiterate it much better. So count is one of the functions which we get from the maps library in C++, which tells us if the certain key already exists or not. For example, let's say in the first given uh, array, we have two, two, one. So as we iterate, we're going to insert two, but we are also going to check if the two already exists. Right. So, so this if statement is going to help us find if the value already exists or not. Uh, okay. Continue. So that, uh, so simply for one thing that I can do is, um, I can say num of bits is going to be less plus, so that we are incrementing the number of duplicates. I know it's gonna start with zero in the beginning and then what we can do is we can say uh, data map and then nums dot i and then we can assign the value uh, to the num of so technically what we are doing right now is we have incremented the number of duplicates so this else statement is always going to be first so let's assume there is just only one, uh, two. So it's going to come in here. It's going to increase the number of duplicates. And then it's going to go in here. It's going to set the value. So here comes the next um, setting part, which is going to be, um, firstly, it's going to be finding out the number of duplicates, which are already existential. So we can say number of, uh, and let me just here. So now I know the number of duplicates which are in here. And then I can say num of uh, it's plus plus. And finally I can assign it back uh, to num of just to do one other change though, I would probably 
uh, make number of duplicates zero every single time so that it's new and um, it's just dependent on the loop because for every single vector at every single position, I want it to start with zero until I find out what is actually happening in the map or not. So according to, so uh, like as far as what I wrote, um, I've created a for loop and then I have um, used, I have used uh, a method called dot count, which checks whether the key exists in the uh, map or not. If it uh, exists, then I'm going to find out the number of duplicates because that's going to be the value of it. So I'm storing mm -hmm. the value and then I'm incrementing the value and then I'm reassigning it back to the uh, key related to it so that I know the values are being added. And then if the number doesn't exist, I'm just going to make zero to be one. Uh, technically, I can just say equals to one because that's what it's going to happen every single yeah. time because that's the only thing. Maybe I think this is much better than going for an iteration. So, and then I would probably say, I would assign the value to the key. So this is one of the things. And then once we're done with it, um, once we're done with that for loop, the next thing that we can do is iterate it it through the map this time, but uh, as you know, maps already sorts everything out. We can't really go with the strategy of um, finding at the index. We have to use an uh, enhanced for loop or for each loop for it. So I'm going to say uh, for auto E, so I've just used it as an ampersand, so just that it doesn't create any applications. Um, data map. And then, So now I'm trying to iterate it. And then um, once I'm trying to iterate the map, I can say if e dot second. So e dot second represents uh, the value. Represents the value. Um, so if i dot second. So by the value, you mean the, the number of duplicates, correct? Yes, exactly, the number of duplicates. Um, I can probably return e dot first so that we know which value is being returned. And then technically we can end the for loop over here. Uh, and then once we're done with the for loop, we can just say return negative 919 or negative 999 when we didn't find a value. So technically then if you wanted to represent something that's invalid in int, you can always use negative one. Negative um, one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so but uh, negative 999 should be sufficient as well. But uh, yeah, um, great. So, so this, yeah, so this yeah. Is my approach for it. Yeah, awesome. So, um, so just to yeah, of your approach because it um, it seems awesome. Um, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, in your first for loop, right? Uh, when yes. you were trying to set up. Uh, yes. the math and figuring out the number of duplicates. Um, just two questions. Um, so first question is, why is it necessary to initialize num of, num of duplicates um, before you start the if condition? Um, because prior to the for loop, you're also initializing it. So I yes. thought, why would it uh, matter? Um. Yes, uh, so there were a uh, few of the, that is one of the key decisions that I've taken because every time when we go into the loop, we are technically looking at uh, a new number. Uh, so that new number is going to be a new key. Uh, I want to start with zero, even though let's assume it's already duplicated like few times, maybe like six, seven times. I still wanted to start with zero and then change the value so that yeah. every time it begins as a new one. 
uh, it's it's always a good approach so that we don't overwrite numbers. Usually, that's one of the main reasons why uh, most of the problems um, we approach, we might overwrite them with the yeah. technical values that we have. So zero would be a better approach for that. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. My second question is um, within the if statement itself. Okay. Um, so the declaration uh, is perfect. The if condition, that makes sense. Um, but when you start with the if condition, you say num of duplicates equals the data map at that specific index of the yes. vector. Yes. And then on the third line, you store it back to it. So yes. um, could you explain more upon that, enlighten us? Sure. Uh, so one of the main reasons that I have done it is, uh, firstly, I want to know how many duplicates we have. Okay. Um, yeah, in any given scenario, we might find um, let's say if we actually have a large set, we might find multiple number of twos in them. Uh, when I find them out, I just want them to, uh, I just want to get the value. And uh, the second line, which is one of the most important lines of the program, this is where I'm updating the duplicates. I want to update the duplicates and then reassign the values so that all the values are set. And uh, I just want to automate this process. It's like, uh, I get yeah. We'll check the value implemented and then I assign it back. So it's kind of like the process which makes sure it goes in and works it out. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, this looks a great approach to pursue and uh, you explained it perfectly. Awesome, sounds good. Yeah, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity to join us today and uh, attending this interview. Uh, we really had a great experience um, talking with you and uh, knowing more about your background knowing more about the explanatory process, everything. And uh, we will get back to you soon, as soon as possible. And uh, hope to see you soon here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.